everyone uh so welcome to the pre recorded lecture on solid earth geophysics for this week on uh, 4th of september and uh, we are continuing with gravitational technique and yesterday we left with the definition of gravitational potential okay so let us begin there gravitational potential and we define gravitational potential as potential energy of a unit mass in the field of gravitational attraction so if a particular body has a mass of m okay for that particular body and for that particular body the total potential energy ep will be ug multiplied by m right so ug is essentially the gravitational potential multiplied by its mass okay so change in that potential energy will be dp we can denote it as dp and that will be m d ug right and then we previously derived that dp is equals to f dr you remember okay. and f we can further uh, write down as minus m ag dr the clear in one moment right so dp is equals to minus mag dr okay so i can further simplify this form ag can be written as minus d ug dr right and then of course if we uh, as we know you know ag is a vector because it's acceleration due to gravity so i can further resolve ag into ax ay and az can resolve ag into three components and i can uh, express that as minus delta delta x delta ug delta y and az will be delta delta z so what we are getting that dug dr is equals to gm by r square that is how we have expressed the uh, expressed gravitational uh, acceleration right gm by r square so ug then if we integrate we can write down ug is equals to so or now we if we just simply integrate it equals to 
minus n by r right so this is another important uh, uh so let let uh, this is uh, just uh, ug equals to minus m by r right this is another important formula that you should keep in your mind okay one was uh, ag that was equals to minus gm by r square okay minus r square remember from our last class we derived that yeah and then ag is equals to minus gm by r okay these are two important uh, derivations or two important relationship that you should keep in mind okay let's proceed further now if we think so whatever we have derived so far for a point mass now let us try to derive acceleration and potential of a distribution of mass okay and potential for a distribution of that is something we are going to see how it looks like so let us begin by using our coordinate frame x y and z and then let us imagine that i have a body of irregular size is a three dimensional body of irregular size and then i want to understand the potential and acceleration a point p due to the presence of this particular body okay so what we can do if the total mass Yeah. So, if the total mass of the body is m, we can think that it is actually a product of several smaller portions of masses, okay, which are like m one, m two. m3 and so on and so forth okay and then from m1 e is uh based at a distance of r1 so their uh distance vector is r1 similarly from m3 you know sorry my apologies let me do it somewhere else on the top okay this is r1 suppose no m4 is here so again is r4 and similarly you can say this is m3 so i can write down ag is equals to minus G M one by R one square R one minus G 
एम टू आर टू स्क्वायर आर टू एम थ्री आर टू स्क्वायर राइट एंड सिमिलरली आई कैन आल्सो एक्सप्रेस पोटेंशियल इक्वल्स टू माइनस ई एम वन आर वन M two R two e by R three, and then we can integrate it. Okay, that is something we can do. But the problem is, what we are essentially doing here, we are actually discrete discretizing mass, right? But discretization of mass is not. Uh, a feasible concept okay mass is a continuous body right so this retization of mass is not a feasible concept as mass is continuous so to overcome that problem we can actually take a slightly different route and what we can do is now let's not the, the topic will be still the same let us say what we do now Take the same philosophy, use it in a in a in a different way. But so I have my x, y, and z. Of course, I have my body of no of any any shape. Okay. What we can do instead of discretizing mass, we can discretize volume. Okay, that is not a problem. Okay, we can subdivide this total volume, okay, into number of smaller discrete volume, and let us say one such volume is the V. Okay, so the mass of this particular uh, volume is the V. So M one. Let's say this: the mass of this volume is m1 is equals to dv rho1, right? And then, if we can essentially integrate uh, all the dv's, okay? And let us, if we, if we say that we have, a, you know, a singular density, then we don't have to integrate rho. I mean, rho will be common. But then, if we integrate uh, all the dv's, I should be able to discretize the body in terms of volume. So with that philosophy, we can write down u g is equals to minus g, and we have to integrate in the direction of x, in the direction of y, the direction of z, okay. rho x y z. Yeah. dx, dy, dz, r, x, y. Okay. So here I am essentially integrating rho in the x direction, y direction, and z direction. Yeah. And then of course I am subdividing with r, right? And that will provide me also. The gravitational potential, okay, and if we think that this is this particular mass that we are we are thinking is the mass of the Earth, so we can write down u g equals to minus e e by r, where e is the mass of the Earth. Okay. 
and AG is equals to minus e, e by R square, where E is the mass of the Earth. Okay. So, not by discretizing the mass, but by discretizing the volume, you can also come up to the simple solution of calculating UG. Okay. Now, let us do a simple numerical. So, from this and from this, you know, let us do some more derivation. So, we can now think of the earth okay? and then let us say the radius of the earth is capital R, mass of the earth is capital E okay? and then of course um, I can express E is equals to R square AG by capital G. I am only looking at the magnitude, okay. So, this is from AG is equals to EG by R square. So, if I just sim you know do some uh, uh, simplification, I can express E is equals to R square AG by G. Okay? Now, you know uh, the value of AG is generally is around 9.81 meter per second square, right? And the radius of the earth is, is around 671 kilometer. And let us say we take a value of G is equals to 6.674 into 10 to the power minus 11 meter cube or minus 1. Yeah. So if we just uh, put these numbers in here, we will find the value of E is around, will be around uh, 5.974 into 10 to the power 24 kg. You can put these numbers and you will get a very close number like this, right? Now, also from here, from this radius of the earth, 67.1 kilometer, we can calculate the volume of the earth, right? right. And volume of the earth, how? 4 third pi r cube, right? 4 third pi r cube will provide me the volume of the earth. And if we put that number, what we will find this will be will be a value I have not calculated it uh, right now but then if we then uh, you know try to calculate the density of the earth so this will be essentially four third pi r is your uh, you know um, six three seven one into you can do a thousand right you can calculate the volume, okay, whatever this number will be. Okay. Then you can calculate the density of the earth. And that will be, if you do that, you know, you have calculated. So that will be E by V, right? And that will come very close to. Five, five, one, five, kg per meter cube, right? Now, or we can essentially, essentially say that this is around uh, five point five gram per cc. 
right so by this method what i am seeing i have calculated the density rho earth around 5.5 gram per cc now <clears throat> We know that the rho of the continental crust is around 2.7 gram per cc, right? And rho of the uh, oceanic crust is not very high, you know, 3.1 or 3.5 gram per cc. Okay? It's a little bit higher. But the average density of the earth, as you can see, is 5.5 gram per cc, which is almost double, right? Double the value. So that provides us a direct clue that the mass is not uniformly distributed, right? And what that means that my mantle and core is, I mean, way heavier Than the crust. Right? So if we just simply do a calculation of the average density, we can find that simple uh, comparison. Okay. Now, I will end this pre recorded, short pre recorded video by introducing one small concept, what we call as equipotential surface. So, <clears throat> equipotential surface is a surface where at all points UG is same. So suppose this is my earth, and then I am considering a surface. Okay. Suppose this is capital R the radius of the earth and then I am considering a surface suppose which is you know each one meter above the above the uh, above the surface of the earth and then we find at each point if we measure ug yeah it will be the same and hence I will call it the potential surface. Now the question is whether this will be H1 everywhere or it will be H1 here, H2 here, H3 here. So whether it will be, um, I mean, of uh, uniformly distant from the surface of the earth or it will be uh, distantly spaced okay 
if uh, and we will and then this will essentially form one of the uh, most important concept of that we will use in our gravitational technique okay the clue is if we think that you know the earth is like a perfect sphere okay and of course you know all the materials like the crust is of same thickness also the mantle is of same thickness everywhere and then the core is of same thickness everywhere i mean it's like a perfect ideal spherical entity then we might see that the h will be uniformly distributed i mean h so the, it will be the same value h it will be the it will be uniformly distant from the surface of the earth but if it is not the case we will see it will vary like the potential surface will not be like a simple concentric ring all over the earth okay it will change its shape and we will uh see why it is and we will uh, investigate that particular thing further and that will form one of the basis of the geophysical techniques that we are going to discuss later on okay so i think we are uh, done i mean uh, for the time being we have covered a bit on um, equipotential surface and and gravitational potential okay the next thing that we have to understand is centrifugal acceleration acceleration and centripetal acceleration but uh, that will be in the next class of course uh, because i don't want to um, discontinue the lecture uh, in the middle and i want to uh, move ahead with a, a lot of things on this particular topic okay so i stop the lecture here it was a short video but uh, an important topic that i tried to explain today all right i will see you then on the next class